three, two, one. Good evening, everybody. I'm glad you're here. Glad you were able to join us for adult Bible study. Yes, I know a child is teaching adult Bible study, but bear with me. Uh, guys, I am so blessed that all of you are here. I am blessed to be a part of this church, this family, the people that have come together and are worshiping, but not only that, but are being Christ in the world. And I'm so blessed to be a part of this church and part of your family. And I know we're not able to meet as much as we'd like to, but God is still working. Can I get an amen? If you believe in that, post, comment amen down here. Let's just see if you're able to do that, okay? Very simple. If you believe God's working, comment amen. Woohoo! Amen. So God is working. It's going to be a great day. Now, today's lesson is called The Chosen. Okay? The Chosen. We're going to get into that real quick. But before we do that, I want to ask you, do you know what the most, the most painful thing that can happen to you? The, the hardest thing, the thing that hurts the most around, uh, like to, and everyone I believe has experienced this at one point, the hurt that truly just goes to your core. Do you know what hurt I'm talking about? Yeah, that's right. The hurt that comes from when you were the last person chosen for the dodgeball team. It's just so hard. It hurts. Okay, maybe that's not the biggest hurt, but you know what it feels like. You know, it does not feel good to be the last one chosen. Especially whenever there's like 20, 30 people. And at the very end, there's you and one other person. And at, in the end, out of all those people, you know the other the, that guy who's choosing does not want you. And the other person is just stuck with you. It's not a good feeling to be chosen last for any team, whatever game you're playing. And I know as adults, you're like, well, you know, I don't play dodgeball anymore. Unless you're a youth pastor. But... A lot of us still know, remember what that feels like with sports and games and life, but we also still know what it feels like because we like to be chosen. We like to be considered. We like to be appreciated for what we can do. And, you know, it hurts. It does. <laughs> but it hurts, you know, whenever we're not chosen. But I'm going to tell you a little secret, a little biblical secret today that you might know and you might not. But here's a bit. <sighs> Sorry. Here's the biblical secret. God has chosen you. And it's not like God's had to go and like, okay, well, Peter's already taken and Pastor Dave's already taken and else, I guess I'll have you. No, that's not how it is. God has gone and said, you, I want you a part of my team. I have, out of, I want you. I specifically want you. And if you don't believe me, uh, go to 1 Peter 2.9. 1 Peter 2.9, okay? You got it? You got it? Got your Bible open? Uh, we're, we got a couple Bible verses today, so get your Bible ready, because here's 1 Peter 2.9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, real quick, you might wonder, like, okay, well, he that's probably talking about, you know, the Israelites. They're his race, right? They're, they're the people God chose. But no. One, this is the New Testament. And Christ, whenever he came to the world, he said, my love is not just for one people, but it's for all people who receive him and right here and it says but you are a chosen race you are made new you are part of his family a royal priesthood a holy nation a people for his own possession that you mo you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light guys that's the word can i get an amen Amen that we are chosen. Amen. If you believe in that, comment below. Say amen right now that God has chosen us because he has pulled us out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. If you believe that, comment amen right below. Right here. Come on. I know you can do it. Comment. 
I want to see if y'all are paying attention. If you're listening to Pastor Aaron, comment amen if you believe that. <laughs> okay, I'm ridiculous. But say God has called us and God has chosen us to do amazing stuff. And I think that's one of the best verses in the Bible. One of my professors at college really, he loved that verse like a lot. And he said it every day pretty much. Because he believed that. He believed that so much that we are chosen to be God's team. And so God has chosen you and he's called you to join us. But here's the thing. Unlike God, like on a team with Dodwell, if I pick this person, they're on my team whether I have an, uh, whether I, they want to or not. They're on my team. I've made the decision. But God instead calls us. He's chosen you and he says, hey, I want you for my team. But here's the thing. We have to make the decision. We have to accept it. God's called us. We have to accept the call. So I want to talk about if we're going to be the chosen people, there are three things God has called us to. Okay, And luckily, uh, they all start with the same letter. And as you know, we get bonus heaven points as a pastor if we can make things have the same letter. It's just like it all goes together. <laughs> Okay, no, that's stupid. Uh, but we are called to three things, okay? We are called to salvation. We are called to sanctification. And we are called to serve. Okay? Now we're going to get, we're going to break those down. Look what it, look kind of what that means and all this stuff. But we as a people, as God's chosen team, are called to those three things. Now we're going to go to the first thing, which is called to salvation. Which we will find, sorry, I have all these different things. Okay. In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Here we go, okay? The word. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result, uh, not a result of works that that uh, of works, so that no one may boast. And it continues on right there. But God has called us to salvation. And that, guys, this is the easiest one. This is the simplest one. Most of you know this. Most of you have already done this one, and we we got it. Okay, God has called us to salvation to accept His gift, to accept that as the other as uh, second as First Peter said, you know, to be that we were brought out of darkness. To accept that, not to stay within darkness, not to live there, not to uh, reside and just stay in our past, but to be brought into his marvelous light, to be saved by grace. That is the first calling, the calling to salvation, to accept what God has done for us. And guys, that's, that's a, it's, it's one of the simplest, but also one the, probably the biggest one. We have to accept that we need saving to accept that we need God and accept his helping hand that he's reached out to us. So that's, if we're going to be his chosen people, we have to accept his salvation. Because no one comes to the Father except through him. So, that's the first thing. You're called to salvation. Amen. We have accepted Christ into us. We're good. We're gone. We're moving forward. Okay, so, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Salvation. Now, second one, called to sanctification. Now, that's a big word, sanctification. Um, uh, sanctification. <laughs> Wait, that's the wrong bookmark, right? Sorry, peoples. <laughs> yes, we're called to sanctification. Nope. There we go, sorry. Uh, we're called to sanctification. And I've said that five times now. <laughs> I was about to say it again. Sanctification is this. And I had to learn it. And we had to learn it. Because sanctification is a big word that pretty much means this. Letting God change our hearts. That's what it means. It means letting God change our hearts. And sanctification also means being set apart. As a... Uh, as First Peter says, we become a holy nation. We are set apart. We are different from everyone around us. And it's not saying that we're, oh, we're better than people. We're better than, that does, it does not mean that. Christians should never go around and be thinking that like, 
Oh, well, I'm a Christian. I'm set apart, you lower beings. You just need Jesus. That's not what it should be. Some people take it like that, but that's not what it means. To be set apart means that we allow God to change us and work through us and change and sets us apart to not live for ourselves, but to live like him. We're different whenever we choose to live for God and not ourselves. That's what sanctification is. And um, in 1 Thessalonians uh, 5.23, it says this. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so right there it says it. God wants to sanctify us, wants to set us apart, wants to make us new. Not just, uh, not just our bodies, but he wants us to sanctify our spirits, our soul, and our body. That's everything we are, all that we are. He wants to make us new, the way we think, the way we act, the way we feel. He wants us to be made new in him. We're called the sanctification. We're his chosen people. We're called to be sanctified. That's amazing. I praise God and I thank him for choosing me and making me new. So... God is working and he's made us, he's, he's, he's sanctifying us. But you have to choose. I mean, but that's the thing. God doesn't not just going to do this to us. We have to accept it. We have to be willing to let God work in us. Because I also, I know uh, a lot of us, you know, um, ha, uh, I'm not, ha, if we go to the dentist, it's like going to the dentist. And we get there, the dentist looks, says, hey, you got a big old cavity. And we're like, okay, I'm fine. Thank you. And we don't let him get in there and work. I don't want you to stick any needles in my mouth or a grossness or a touch me. That's weird. No, we don't want any of that. Not Nothing going on in here. We, and we go to the dentist and we don't accept any help. That's what it's like to accept salvation but not to accept sanctification. God's wanting to move within us and form us to be more like him. And, but we have to accept it. We have to allow God to move in our hearts, to sanctify our spirit and our soul and our body. We have to let him move in us because God's not going to force him. In. So we're called the sanctification to let God move. And the last one is we are called to serve. I feel like this is one that we all, we all struggle with sometimes. We struggle with, like, we get we get to the point where, okay, we're saved, we're good, that's awesome. Okay, you want me to better myself? Okay, I'll better myself and all this stuff. I'll focus on me and all this stuff. But the last one is very hard because it calls us to look outside of ourselves. Salvation is calling us to look to God. Sanctification is calling us to, fix, uh, to let God fix ourselves. But now we're called to serve and work and bless others. I think it's really been hard during this time um, because, you know, with all the fear, with all the panic, with all the hurt that's been going around right now, it's very easily to take care of me and mine. It's very easily to focus on, okay, this is what my family needs. This is what I need to take care of. This is, uh, I don't want to get around anyone or touch anyone. And it's very easy to forget or ignore the pain of others. But we are called to serve. In John, the book of John, not first John, but the book of John 15, 16 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give to you. And now you might be wondering, why does God want us to go make apples? It's not what he's talking about. Bearing fruit in this sense is if God's going to come into your heart, change you, sanctify you, that's going to show in your life. Because when we are sanctified, we are called to serve others and to bless others. We're called to show love and live that out. And it's amazing and incredible what God can do, what God will do. 
You did not choose me, but I chose you. And he appointed us to serve, to bless those. So right now, take a moment, just take a moment. Think about the people in your life around you that you can bless. Think about the people that you have an opportunity to show love to, to help. And I've, and I've been thinking about that specifically for me because, you know, I mean, I have, I have different people in my life, but I think because of my calling, God has specifically put young people in my path that I can help. And if I, and, and, I, and I praise God that I have been able to, with technology and all this stuff, be reaching out to them through this time. But if I'm not helping others, if I'm not reaching out and blessing the teens, then I'm not doing what the God has asked me to do. If I'm not blessing and serving them and, bl and trying to bring Christ and bring his love to him and show to them that they are called and they are chosen, then I'm... I'm not letting God work through me. I'm not accepting this call to serve if I'm focusing on me and not others. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is this. It's a TV show. And you never need to guess what it's going to be called. It's called The Chosen. One of the best TV shows I have ever watched. And that's saying something, because I watch a lot of TV. But it's one of the best shows, and it's absolutely, I believe, the best uh, biblical show. <laughs> it's the best, uh, it's a, and it's a TV series, not just a movie, not just a, about Jesus on this earth. But it's even more so because it's called The Chosen. It it's, has Jesus, and it's about his time on earth, but even more so, it's about the people he called. It's about the disciples and the people he impacted and about the people he healed. It's The Chosen. It's free to watch. You just got to download the app, The Chosen. I'll probably, I'm going to try to put a link in this so you can go find it if you can. I'm going to try to do that for you. But The Chosen is one of the best shows ever that I've ever seen. Because not only does it just represent Christ well, but it shows us in these people. In Peter, in John, in Andrew, in uh, I think even better so, Matthew. Because if you remember, Matthew is was a tax collector. And it, in both Peter and Matthew, where Peter is a, uh, or in his name is Simon at the time, Simon is a Jew to this core and is very human. And Matthew is a, a, is a Jewish tax collector, so has turned his back on his people. And so these people who would hate each other because... Uh, of the differences in their culture and all that other stuff and the, and the bitterness between them, God calls them both to become new. And you see God slowly because he calls them to salvation. He calls them to him and they answer. But then it's hard when the God calls them to sanctification. It calls that God's changing them. You can see that in every step that God is working in them and through them to make them new. And it's amazing to watch. And then you see even more so how God is calling them to serve. Not to focus on themselves. Not to focus on their own ideologies or own thoughts, but to on others and to, how to bless them. So that's what we're calling you today. One, I'm challenging. Go watch this series, The Chosen. It's an app, and it has eight episodes. Really amazing. It's the first series, season, second season is on its way. Super excited. But it's, it's an amazing image that we can, we can relate to. Because we have trouble with those three callings. We have trouble accepting the call that we need to change our lives. That God is here and he wants to work in us. It's hard to accept that a lot. And then God wants to change the way we feel and think and uh, and we act. And that's hard to accept and even harder to live out. I think God calls us to think outside of ourselves, but think of others. And we all go through that. But I promise you this. You are chosen. You are part of God's chosen people. 
God chose you to, to experience him. You, God wants you on his team. God wants you to accept him and let him work in you and let him work through you. God has chosen you, but we have to accept the call. So that's this week. This week, uh, I want you to really be praying about this. Praying about what is God calling you to right now? In your life, in your practical life, at your job, at your, in your family, at your, in your household, in your relationships, how is God calling you, challenging you to be different? How is God challenging you to be his people? To be his holy, chosen nation. Because he chose you. We didn't choose him. He chose you. <sighs> Guys, I'm getting all emotional. <laughs> no, but I am. It's. I don't feel like I'm good enough. I don't. I don't feel like I'm good enough to be chosen. But God looked at me just as he did with Matthew, just as he did with Simon, just as he did with Judas and everyone else. And he chose them. But it matters, are we going to choose God? Are we going to choose to answer his call? So that's a challenge this week. To not just hear his word, but to accept his call. To accept the challenge to be saved. To accept the challenge to be sanctified. And to accept the challenge to serve. You and I are the chosen people. And if you feel like you've never been part of that, guess what? God still chose you. And he wants you to be a part of his team. Uh, so we're going to pray right now. And we're going to give this time to God because it is God's time. It's God's time. Amen. Amen. Uh, it's God's time, and we just know that he's going to work through us, not just the pastors. He's going to work through us, the body, the church. He's going to work through us, and it's going to be amazing, and God is going to do great things, and he is doing great things, and I'm so excited for what God's going to do. I know it's recording, and you can it's like a little different to feel the emotions and all this stuff, but feel how excited I am. <laughs> God is going to work and it's going to be great. I love all of y'all. I know Pastor Aaron is weird, but thank you for giving me your time. We're going to pray right now and we are going to allow God to work. So if you would take off your beanies, because I know all of you are wearing them. We're going to pray and give this time to God. My head's flat if you take off the beanie. Dear God, I thank you for today and I thank you for all you've done. I thank you for this amazing church. And not, I'm not talking about this building. I'm talking about your people, God. Your chosen people. Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of your team. God, work through us. Work through, um, work through our hearts. Work through our actions and our thoughts and our minds, God. You've called us to so much more than what we can do on our own. God, we need you and we trust you. We thank you for all you've done and all you're going to do. God, we worship you and we know that you are here with us. God, I praise you. I thank you for the opportunity that you saw me and you chose me. That you don't just call the qualified, but you qualify the called. That you work in us and you change us and you help us be what you need us. Thank you for this church. Thank you for uh, the men and women who are working to show your love. Let us always make you the priority. Let us share what you've done for us. Let us accept your call and let us live it out. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. It's in your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Well, guys, I am so excited for you. Hope you're having a great night. And that's about it. <laughs> uh, praying for you. Hope you have a good, good night. And know that God has chosen you for his dodgeball team. <laughs> good night.